Um, today we have a webinar about choosing the right thermoplastic injection unit, and I'll give a brief introduction to our KOL and presenter. Abraham Cortina joined TCS in 2011 after receiving his law degree from San Pablo CEU in Spain, where he also completed his master's with honors in international business. Since coming to TCS, he has traveled worldwide organizing training events and lectures, including lectures at two universities in Colombia, Bogota Politecnico Internacional and Santo Tomas. In Chile, he helped incorporate TCS flexible partial training at the University of Santo Tomas. His knowledge of TCS products and his ex expertise in the dental industry help him collaborate with clients so they can build their business through marketing, training courses, and seminars. He has built strong relationships with distributors, laboratories, and dentists. Additionally, Abraham works closely with master dental technicians and dentists to continuously learn more about removal, removable dental restorations. And Abraham also led the development of TCS's newest resin, Carident. He also assists in the development of TCS equipment. And without further ado, here is Abraham Cortina. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you all of you for being part of this webinar and a special thanks for Zon for making this webinar possible. Uh, today we're going to try to see the differences between the different TCS injection units and in order for oral labs to, to be able to determine what would be the best unit to fit their, their needs. Why would I recommend the TCS units? First of all, we make the, all of our units in-house. By making our units in-house, the the positive aspects of this is, for example, you get faster repairs. We have all parts always ready. We have local troubleshooting, so you can call during business hours in case anything uh, is needed for the machine, any parts, any, any questions about the working of the machines. Then lower cost of repairs. You would only ship it inside the US it's, uh, to our facility in California. Ground shipping, anything gets done and we what we try to do if, if the machine requires some repair is we don't overcharge like usually like car dealers do. We just charge the cost of the, of the repair plus the labor. And also what we have is a continuous after sale support. So we have a technical hotline where you have where we have two technicians in the East Coast and West Coast that are always available for to help you in any case that you, in any thing that you might need regarding our any of our flexible materials or our machines. We have continuous hands-on training throughout the US. Uh, currently this year we've done eight different states. So we tried not to stay at the same locations, but we try to go through the whole US to re reach us as many technicians as possible and try to make their, their travels shorter. And then we always have a products in stock that's very important in order to keep a good relationship with our customers, making sure that whenever you need a cartridge, it's ready. Usually small orders are shipped the same day. And then in order for, for the, the best help possible, we have free promotional material to help you grow the removal department. And this, as an example, we have statement stuffers. We have doctor booklets, which are which could be personalized. and. And in this doctor book list, you get a, a complete guide for a doctor, because usually doctors might have uh, questions on, on how to adjust, how to trim, or how to insert a partial. So these doctor booklets give you the, the speed of the burst, how they have to trim, how they have to take care of the partial, the different materials that we have, the different characteristics. And, and then we also offer personalized shape guides. So you can call in Basque or, or Manny here at TCS, and they'll be able to customize with your logo, your the, the shade cast that you then give to your doctors. And then also with every single cartridge that you receive, you should be getting a sample cleaner, a patient education brochure, and a delivery bag with, with every single cartridge. This is the main overview of the machines we're gonna see today. We have at the left, the all-in-one unit. This is the TCS automatic injector. And the main difference between the other two units is that the all-in-one is uh, all-inclusive, the furnace is inside, and as you can see, the hydraulic 
and the manual injector, but those are two-piece injection units. So they have a, a press, an injector, and a furnace. And then the one all the way to the right is a handheld injector. It uses, it's, it works in conjunction with a furnace. And this unit, it's usually for smaller and faster. And then I'll get into detail as a, as the presentation goes, and I'll tell you what, what I would consider the, the positive and the negative aspects of each of the units, and when would I buy, depending on the size of the lab and your production, each of, of the units. I just want to give a brief explanation of the three materials that we have, just explaining what I consider flexible and semi-flexible materials. So unbreakable and iFlex, the two at the top, are considered flexible materials. By flexible, I mean you can flex them and you shouldn't be scared of, of them breaking. And then keratin is a semi-flexible material. The way, why am I explaining this is because it's, um, they inject differently, they require different pressures. And therefore, when I speak about the different units, I want you to just make sure which one is which to understand how the, how the pressure goes and how the injections have to be done, taking into account each of the resins that we have. The first unit we're gonna talk about is the, the TCS automatic injector. This TCS automatic injector is, the whole machine is what you see. It doesn't have an external furnace. So furnace is inside the machine. It's compact, so usually labs that are looking for something small, they like this unit, and it's very simple to use. When you receive it, you just put it over the counter of a table, connect it to the electricity, and connect the hose to the compressor. And then it has an on and off button, choose the temperature of the material you're gonna inject, and then to inject, it's just a push of a button, the one all the way at the bottom. This system, the only thing that you need to make sure is that you have a compressor that ha reaches at least 175 PSI. That's more than enough. I just don't like the compressors to be working at the max, for example, 150. So I would recommend having a compressor that reaches 175. Therefore, you have more than enough pressure for, for any of the materials, both the flexibles and the semi-flexibles. Since the furnace is inside the machine, this will, in a sense, uh, lower this, the, the speed of injections. So it only has one furnace inside. So what you do is you place the cartridge inside and you have to wait, let's say for a keratin, 15, 16 minutes for the material to press. Then you, you hold it under pressure for a minute. And then you would have to remove the flask, wait a couple of minutes for the temperature to st stabilize, and then inject, uh, put the second cartridge and, and inject. So therefore, the fastest you can do is one one material, let's say, every 50, if every 20 minutes. So if you had 20, 30 cases per day, this might not be the, the perfect unit that you want to buy, unless you, you like it and you can buy two, three units, but you would have to buy three complete new units. Working with compressor, you need to make sure that every single injection, just prior to injecting, you need to make sure that the, the pressure is exactly what you need. For example, if it's our flexible material, iFlex or unbreakable, the PSI has to be at 140 PSI. If, if you're working with keratin, I would go to 155 or 160. So you do need to make sure, you need to check just prior. Why? Because if you're sharing a compressor in a lab, let's say there's three, or, three other technicians and someone uses the hose, the air hose, at the same time you're injecting, this will lower the PSI and you might get a short casting. So that's why some people, what they what, and what I sometimes recommend is that having a only compressor for this unit, unless you want, you, you have the, the barometer next to it and you can check just prior to injection and let people at the lab know that you're gonna inject. That's my major concern regarding the, the any machine that works with, with their compressors that they require a constant PSI, so you just need to make sure it's, it's completely stable at the moment of injection. The actual injection is very fast, just takes a couple minutes, but sorry, a couple seconds, but it's just enough that you need to make sure that nobody's using it. This machine heats the flask 
So for example, if since the flask is placed on top of the machine and the machine is hot, if you're injecting our flexible materials, we recommend in being injecting in a, in a room temperature flask. So you would just place the flask one minute prior to injection. If you're doing the semi-rigid materials, which we recommend the flask being hot, then those you could put the flask five, 10 minutes before to make sure the, fla the flask stays hot during the injection. Now we're gonna see a short overview of how the machine works. Here's where the, on the top is where the flask goes. This is the push button. The hose for the air connection. The first thing you have to do that I recommend doing this before the machine is hot is spray the mold release spray inside the, the chamber and on the cartridge. This just as for as a lubricant to make sure the, the cartridge squeezes properly and doesn't have any kind of friction with the with the chamber where it's on. As you may know, the TCS cartridges have lasered on the back the, the material that you're using, the color and the lot number. In this machine, you need to make sure that when you insert the cartridge, the laser part goes to the bottom and the crypt part goes to the top, as you can see here in the zoom part. If you do it the other way around, the cartridge will not inject as it would not, it would require at least double the amount of pressure. Something that I recommend in general for all automatic machines is scoring the cartridge prior to injection. So in order to make it to simplify the injection and make it easier for the cartridge to, to break, just gently with a spatula, a Lecron spatula or similar, just mark it with an X, but make sure you do not puncture the cap. You just mark it with an X just to facilitate the breaking of the cartridge. You place the top, the flask on top of the machine and the lever, make sure it's, it's close, it's, you close it tightly. And then the only thing you have to do when, once the timer goes off is turn the lever to the right and injects. You would, I would recommend any inflexible material, you leave it for a minute under pressure and then the same lever where you inject it you make sure you put it to release. If you try to open the, the flask when it's on the, the lever at the top, when, the, when it's under inject, you might have problems. You would feel a lot of resistance because this, still the flask is under pressure. So you make sure you have to release it before, prior to, to trying to release the flask from the top. Now we're going to see the manual injector. As you can see, this is the standard, let's call it old fashioned mechanical machine, but it's still in the market because it's still a great machine. The main pros and positive aspects of this machine is it's economical. Some people that are starting business, they, they don't plan to, they, they don't, are not willing to spend a, a large amount of money in, a, in an injection unit. So this will be the most economical. It's extremely simple, no electrical parts. So, I mean, it's very simple to, to understand and, and to work with. It does require a little bit of, of physical strength, uh, not a lot, but you, you need to make sure you don't have any kind of elbow or shoulder injuries. And it's very important to, to place it at the appropriate height. What I recommend is folding the machine into a very, into a table that is folded to the, to the ground. Make sure the table won't move. It has four screws that you have to fold the machine to. And then the, I recommend always the handles being at the height of the chest. When the handles are too high or too low, it just makes it uncomfortable and you have to apply more strength to inject. By the handles being at the height of your chest, it just makes it very easier and it's the, at, the point, at, the, at the point where you require the minimal strength. And then also 
when you're injecting, try to hold the handles from the far end tip. Don't hold them closer to the to where the piston is because you'll have to do double the strength. This, uh, what I like about the manual injections is that you have absolute control over the injection. Meaning, if you want to do small unilateral, you know you're going to do, let's say, a couple turns. If you're going to do a full denture with a semi-rigid material, for example, keratin, you know you have to do at least like five turns. So you're able to control and try to avoid this way having any kind of short castings. Also, when people uh, have, want to save material and, and let's say stone, uh, and what they do is they, they can put two or three cases, bilaterals or unilaterals in the same flask and inject them with the same cartridge at the same time. Usually out of any machine in the market, I would only, doing, I would only recommend doing this with manual machines. Why? Because you, since you know you're, you, you have more than one case in the same flask, you, have, you know you have to press harder and faster than usual so you can make it work, having the absolute control that you have with, with a manual press. Maintenance-wise, it's very easy to maintain. Uh, what I recommend is if the machine is working properly, nothing's happening, then just leave it. There's no maintenance to be done. If it's starting to get harder the handles to, to press after, let's say, three to five years, the only thing you have to do is remove the three screws in the head of the machine, open it, remove the grease, and apply new bearing grease. What happens is that the grease, as the years go by, if the, if the place or the area of the lab where you have it, if it's very dusty, it may start, might start getting clogged, but that's really about it. The rest is purely mechanical and very durable. We have the same machine, we have the same press, manual press here that we use for testings forever, and it's been here for 15 years and, and still works perfectly. Also, manual, this uh, manual system injects any product, so it's perfect for any flexible or semi-flexible, due to the same reason that you have absolute control. The main difference between flexibles and semi-flexibles is that semi-flexibles, material like keratin, requires more strength, therefore you have to press harder. Now we're going to see a small overview of how this machine works. As you can see, I forgot to mention, this white area is, it serves as a guide. So all of the, flat, the TCS flasks have a hole in it. And this has a, a tip right here in the middle. And it's very easy and fast to put the, the flask there and it will make it completely aligned with the piston to make sure you have a perfect and, and straight injection. And the four holes that you can see here are the ones that you use to bolt the machine to into the, into the table. Same as what we did with the automatic injection, the first thing we do is always apply the mold release spray in, uh, on the cartridge just to make it make sure it's well lubricated. As I mentioned at the beginning, the, the manual injection is a two-piece unit. So it has the manual injection acts solely as a, as a press, and then the furnace is what heats and melts the materials. What I like about this is that each, each machine, each unit is completely made for a single function. Therefore, the, the life, the longevity of, of the machines are usually much longer than when you have all in one. So what you're gonna do is, is you, you, you spray the mold release on the cartridge. And then you also spray the, the bronze disc and you put it in. Prior to inserting the the cartridge and the, and the bronze disc, you would have to make sure that the furnace is at the correct temperature. So the first thing you do is you turn the furnace on, you set it at, let's say 550, if you're gonna inject TCS unbreakable, and you heat up the furnace with the cylinder with handle inside. Make sure the cylinder with handle is inside, as if you put it later on, just before putting the cartridge, it will lower the temperature by at least 70 degrees, 
and that will will affect the, the injection if you were to try to inject it like that. Once you place the cartridge inside the furnace, you would wait the 11, for example, for unbreakable 11 minutes, and then you do a transfer. The transfer, it's very simple, but you need to follow a very simple guideline. Is when you're transferring the, the, the cylinder with handle from the furnace to the press, you need to make sure that it's completely horizontal. So when you have to make sure it's, it, you, you don't tilt the cylinder with handle to avoid the, the cartridge from, from falling. If it were to fall, do not grab it with your hand as, as the cartridge is as at a very high temperature and you will burn your fingers. So you transfer, as you can see, completely parallel. When you get to a flask, you start tilting the, the cylinder with handle, you put it in. Once you start, once you start pushing the, when you start rotating the handles, then you leave, you let the right handle go. The, the one was the one that was holding the cylinder with handle and you start pressing the cartridge. And here we have a very good animation of how the material is injected into the flask and it, uh, as we start pressing. Usually the whole process of the transfer will take about eight to 10 seconds from removing the cylinder with handle, placing it on, the, on, on top of the flask and injecting. Make sure you don't take too long too long is over 20 seconds as the material might start getting cold and this would be a possibility to get a short casting. Now we're gonna see the our last major injection unit. This is the TCS electric hydraulic, hydraulic injector. From what I know, we are the only manufacturers in the US of the TCS electric hydraulic units. And this is our newest uh, injector that we've been selling already for many years, but it's our newest with compared to the previous two. And why did we create this unit? So many people wanted a machine that did not require any kind of physical strength, but at the same time, they wanted a machine that could do high production and that had a constant injection. As you know, anything that works with an air compressor, compressors are always going up and down. They never stay at a certain PSI, let's say 120 PSI. Even if you set it at 120, it goes a little bit higher, then drops, let's say until 100, then it recharges the compressor. So it's very difficult to have exact same injections. And that in the case of injecting uh, uh, flexible partials, you, it's, a, it's a problem where you might start having short castings. With this unit, we it's already pre, the machine is already preset to its perfect PSI, and every single injection will have exactly the same PSI. Therefore, in a sense, it's guaranteed that as long as you waxed and boiled out the flask correctly, you will always have a perfect injection. This machine, what I like about it is that it's, it's also a two unit, like the manual injector. So the furnace goes on the side and it's made to inject. The, the, the motor, it's a heavy duty motor that it's guaranteed by the manufacturer of the, of the motor, a, a US manufacturer for a, for a million cycles. So if you, you make the math, a million cycles, a million injections, I think if it were to break after a million injections, everybody would be more than happy to, to buy a new, a new system if you had it in the same lab for, for a million units. It's very simple. Once you receive it, you only have to fill the, the hydraulic tank with the hydraulic oil. You, you leave it in between the, the levels, minimum and maximum, and then you plug it into like any outlet, and there's nothing else you have to do, no compressor, nothing. I would run a few cycles up and down just to make sure that the oil is all over the machine, it's all over the circuit, and then it's ready to use. It has, similar to the manual injector, a small tip on the bottom that serves as guide. So when you want to inject, even if you're in a hurry, it's very easy to place the flask exactly in its, in its place. We're gonna see a short clip of how this machine works.
This is the small window where you put the, the hydraulic oil. Ideal for high production for, for two different reasons. One, when you have many technicians that are injecting, you don't want to risk the possibility of short castings in the, in the sense, for example, they're using a manual because maybe they don't, they're not very used to injecting. So this will have a constant injector and then you can add as many furnaces as you want. Imagine you're a high production lab, you want to inject, let's say you have 40, 50 cases per day with any air machine that's all in one, would you have would require at least four or five machines with but if you happen to have a TCS hydraulic injector, what you have is one press, and then you just buy extra furnaces. Let's say you would have a total of four furnaces, and you can set up all the injections with a, with a time difference of two minutes. Therefore, you'll be able to inject either one minute of pressure and inject the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one, and then you have enough time to, to start again. And with this system, you can do up to 200 injections per day. This, in a sense, works exactly the same as the manual. So you would spray the, the cartridge, spray the bronze disc, put them inside. Of course, as mentioned before, uh, previously set the furnace at the correct temperature. And very important, it's you insert the cartridge different to the automatic machine. The automatic machine, the laser part went down. In this case, for the hydraulic and the manual, the laser part that you can see here you have to look at it when you're set inserting. So the crimp part and the cap go to the end of the furnace and the laser, you have to be able to see it once you put it in. So again, you transfer being completely horizontal, make sure that it's not tilted. And then once you reach the flask, you tilt it upwards. And then I'm going to explain. One second. And then I'm going to explain the different buttons that the machine has. So it's the on off button, the power. Then this one shows the direction of the piston. Down, it's downwards, up, it's upwards. And then this is the push button. This, this will make the piston move or up or down, depending on, on where the direction is. So just make sure that when you're injecting, you're going to place the, the direction button downwards to make sure the piston will go down. And you have to hold the press as the piston goes down. So you put it down and press. And it press, hold. You leave it one minute under pressure, and then it's ready to go. So those were the three larger injection units. And now the JP90 is an addition to the other units. So with the other unit, with the three larger units, you can do any case from big full dentures you can inject three four cases in the same flask unilaterals you can do everything repairs but why did we create the jp90 so we always got questions from the technicians that do we really have to go through all the process of investing to do small repairs to repair bubbles at a class and before that was the only solution until we had the idea to create this small injector we try to make it as simple as possible and as economical as possible so you could add it to your existing machine without having to spend large amounts of money. And we designed it in a way that it works in conjunction with our furnace. So if you have any of our electric hydraulic or manual furnaces, you only have to, if you were interested in this system, in the JP90, you only have to buy the, the basic kit. You don't have to buy furnace or anything. So it's very simple. 
it's like um let's let's say it's like a min, mini manual system we based in our dia and the standard cocking guns that we have you can see in home depot for for silicon so it has the same mechanism and we use this mechanism because it's very effective durable and and simple to use it's compact it's small and really there's i mean that you can do lots of things with a with a, such a small unit what you can do is you could do repairs let's say you can add a tooth or a or a clasp you could uh, fix a small bubble problem if you were to get a bubble you can fix it quite fast you can do a clasp and you could do a whole new laterals in less than 45 minutes including wax up all the way to a finished case and this is mainly due to, to the that we, there's no investing using the traditional stone method that you have to invest first one side wait till it dries and then the second side this uses a special flask that we designed for this system and it uses a special hard 95 short strength silicon that we have designed specifically for for this now we're going to see a short overview So as you can see, it works with the same furnace. So the, there's two different size cartridges that it comes with. If you're going to inject a full unilateral, we would recommend using the large cartridge. And this cartridge, you have to insert it through the tip. We're gonna see a small clip. So you insert it through the tip and then the orange part that you can see here, it's a special silicon that, was hold, that can hold up to a temperature of 1500 degrees. And we've created a groove inside that silicon. So when you push the cartridge, it fits exactly in its place and it would stay still. I will hold the position. If, you, if you're gonna do a small bubble or a small repair or clasp, then you would use a small cartridge. This small cartridge works differently and it does not required to work in conjunction with the flask. You can just inject into the air or to a matrix body, but, and it's loaded differently. So instead of loading it through the front, it loads through the back. And it has a small knob here around the back part, which holds in this ring, so we'll keep in position. And even when you're injecting, the cartridge will not move forward. So how it works is, you can, I don't know if you could see it. I'm going to. So the, the, the JP90, it's exactly the same height as the furnace. So once you have the cartridge situated in its position, you push it all the way in and this silicon will create a seal with the, with the, with the, with the furnace, leaving, making it possible for the, for the cartridge to, to melt the material. And as you can see, this is the specially designed flask that we created for JP90. What you do is after the boil out, you place the flask on top of the furnace to make sure it stays warm, stays warm. As this system is not as powerful, let's say as electric hydraulic or the manual system, we re always recommend that any of our materials to be injected with a hot flask just to make, just to facilitate the material flowing fully into, into all this, this space. Once you're going to inject, you're going to feel a couple things. First to inject, you need to make sure that the tail of the, of the JP90 is pointing upwards. If you were to put it, to have it downwards, you, you would feel that the, that the trigger is not working and it's not pushing the material inside. So just make sure, just make sure you have the tail pointing upwards. Then while injecting, you would feel, it's, it's difficult to explain, but it's the best thing is that you once you try it, you will understand everything that I said. When you're injecting, the first time you push the trigger, you feel there's no pressure. There's no nothing contained. There's nothing being happening. So, but what it's doing is you're compressing all of the material towards the tip of the JP90. 
once you've compressed everything, you start feeling a little bit more resistance on the trigger. That is the moment where the material is actually going in the furnace, in, in the flask, sorry. So once it's going in the flask, usually it takes about one and a half to two full triggers, and then you're gonna have feel a complete resistance. When you feel a complete resistance, you have two options. You can continue, and most likely the, the silicon putty will break in some area, and you'll have like a small like chimney, like a volcano type, or if you stop, that will be the perfect moment to stop. You will have a complete full injection. After that, you just put it in a bowl of cold water, a couple seconds, and then you're able to remove the JP90. When injecting, it's very important that once you stop the trigger, hold it under pressure. You want to hold it under pressure just to make sure that the material doesn't backflow and you don't have a bubble in the tip of the, of the sprue. And the result of using silicon instead of, of stone is that you have a perfect clean injection. You know, sometimes the most typical thing with stone is that even if you use separator, that you have a stone on the neck of the teeth. All the kits, all the, mentioned, the first three kits that I mentioned, they're available in two different systems. You have a basic kit or a complete kit. Basic kit is when you, let's say, You've already been doing flexibles, but you want to buy a new kit, or you already have experience, you have most of the tools, then I would recommend a basic kit. It has the minimum that is required to start working. It comes with a, just five pack of material, brown discs, the spray, the furnace, a flask, the knockout kit, and the cylinder. The cylinder, plus of course the press and the furnace, that's it. But I would recommend if your lab that you're starting from zero, the flexibles, then in that case, I would recommend the complete kit. The complete kit has everything needed to process a flexible from beginning to end. That includes finishing tools, polishing tools. It comes with 30 cartridges. So the way we, we, we did this is once you do 30 cases and you, and you give them and you sell them to your doctor, the machine would be paid off. And it has all the repair kits, polishings, all the different paste. So you really have everything to test and get the best result of your first flexibles. Something that we created, since we have different injection units to simplify or just to solve people's curiosity, we have a rental program. So what you do is you call TCS, you tell them you're interested in, in one of the units, let's say the electric hydraulic, but of course you don't want to spend uh, X amount of money to before testing the machine. So what you do is you sign up, there's a few requirements that we, we ask from you, and then we will send you a machine, you try it for 20 days and you'd send it back. If you like it, you can purchase it. If you don't like it, you return it with no, with no obligation of any kind. And if, if you imagine you got one of the units and you prefer testing a second one, you can test a second one and then decide. So I just want to give I want to, want to give a very quick overview of the of each of the units and when would I buy each of them. So if I'm wanting to inject all kinds of materials, both flexibles and semi-flexibles, my preference would be electric hydraulic or the manual. If my production size is small, any of the systems would work. If my production was very large, I would go with the electric hydraulic or the manual. Of course, you would have to include more furnaces in order to keep your, uh, your production updated. Maintenance-wise, the automatic may have a little bit more maintenance since it's an all-in-one, so it has the heating elements next to injecting elements, and it requires um, a small couple minutes of, of cleaning every day after the use. The electric hydraulic and the manual really don't require any maintenance, but in the electric hydraulic, checking the oil every couple of years and in the manual, changing the grease every three to five years. Price-wise, the most economical will be the manual injector, then will be the TCS automatic and the most expensive unit due to the cost of the motor will be the electric hydraulic. And then you also have to check if you don't want any kind of physical strength, you would go to air automatic or hydraulic. 
And if you just want an all-in-one, then you would choose, of course, the, the Air Automatic. And then the JP90 is always like an addition to your current lab. So labs that are in a high production, they would usually want to have a JP90 available just for small repairs. And you always have an office that sends you a unilateral and they, they always tell you, I need this by the end of the day or, or by tomorrow then usually with the JP90, it's easier and, and faster. For all of our products, both machines and, and flexible materials, we have both training on, uh, we have, the we, we go to different states. So this year we've done Washington, we've done California, Texas, Colorado, we've been to uh, Virginia, New York, and, and Illinois. And then, so that's usually we try to cover as much as, as we can of the, of, the, of the country. And then we also have the possibility of doing, of having technical support in both Spanish and English. Some lab owners always have a technician that don't, doesn't speak the, the language, so we offer that possibility if it happened to be Spanish. And this is the end of my presentation of the webinar. And now if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them through the, through the questionnaire form on the right. And I'll be, I'll be answering one by one. The price range I can give you the our general. Someone asked, "What would be the the price range that we expect for each type of unit?" I can give you the overall retail price, but then what I recommend would be calling your Zon sales rep, and they will be able to give you uh, the best price. And always ask for promotions, as we're currently we're always giving promotions after each of. If you if you happen to attend to one of the lab days. We always give extra flask or extra cartridges if you attend the lab day and you tell them you saw us there. So I would my I would always recommend asking, but usually the electric hydraulic, the most expensive unit, the full kit will be around five thousand dollars. The basic kit, it's always around eight hundred dollars less. These prices are approximate. Then the air units and then usually the air units is a thousand dollars less than the hydraulic and the manual is a thousand dollars less so more or less there's always around a thousand dollars difference between each price unit being the manual system the most economical and the electric hydraulic the most expensive but as i mentioned the best way to find out the, the price is to contact your sales from from zon and let them know if you're interested in, to, in the basic kit or in the full kit, and they'll be able to give you the, the best price and let you know if any promotion is at that time available.